Hi everyone, a very very welcome into this new tutorial of Android application penetration testing. My name is Sabastachi Paul. In the online community, I go by the name Hot Plugin. And in today's tutorial, I will be teaching you guys how can you perform a penetration testing into an Android application. Right. So in my social media account, I have already posted about this Android application penetration testing guide where I highly mentioned about these prerequisites. Okay, so I will basically go upon this particular mind map and will teach you how can you perform an Android application penetration testing right so the first point which you can see that we are having certain prerequisites which is kind of necessary if you want to jump into this mobile application penetration testing which means that you should be having certain background of uh, this particular world of this particular cyber security right so what we are seeing in this prerequisite is the first point is linux basics that means you should be well familiar with this linux operating system or linux kernel or this linux terminal which means that you should be comfortable using this kind of architecture right you should be uh, comfortable using the terminal command and navigate yourself into that uh, environment next we are having this programming basics which means rather uh, not which means because i can understand like what does programming basics means uh, i am assuming that you know the certain fundamentals of programming you are well aware you can actually code something with the programming languages java is recommended if you know java that's perfectly very good because this android application we will be dealing with java programming languages only but if you know some different languages like c c plus plus python dart so anything would do at least the main focus of this programming basics is that number one you should be able to read the code that will be shown to you in the screen and number two you should be uh, able to fetch the meaning out of that code you should understand what that code is actually doing okay and also you should you should understand the terms like uh, modules packages loops variables and all those things like, like methods classes okay you should be well familiarized with those terms next we have virtualization basics so the first three are very important you should have the third is virtualization basics so you should know how to boot up a virtual machine how to start a virtual machine how to uh, make a virtual machine okay how to fix some if something goes wrong how to fix into a virtual machine okay so you should have a virtualization basics if you do not have that i have already made a video about both virtualization theory as well as how to make your own virtual machine so you can go and watch those videos as well i would highly suggest that and next is optional but i would rather encourage you to go forward with it that is the application development background so it is highly recommended but it's fine if you do not have there is no such rule that you need to be a high-end application developer to jump into it but if you are having that skills it's very good okay so what i am wanting is that you should be well familiar about the application development life cycle how an application is made using android studio okay if you are c comfortable using languages like react native or flutter i mean flutter is not a language it's a framework but still if you can make an android application using flutter kotlin or java anything would do but you should know how an application is made okay and by making an application i'm not telling you to clone an instagram to clone whatsapp what i need is that um, you should know how to how to make a basic android application like for example you are having a small button over there and on click of that button a text is popping up okay so that is enough okay so before you meet this uh, i mean before you jump into this mobile application pen testing you should meet this prerequisites okay next we have the architecture so before we can actually proceed into mobile application hunting you should know the architecture of an android system right so in the architecture we are having application application framework libraries and art and linux kernel so let's see this see it one by one so you can see we are having the picture of android system architecture in the very bottom we have the linux kernel on top of it we have libraries and art also known as android runtime on the top of it we are having application framework and on the very top layer we have the applications layer okay so let's let's see it one by one what do we have through our notes i will be teaching you guys okay so the first is linux kernel so what i have written is the first layer to interact with the hardware it provides fundamental software needed to boot 
मैनेज पावर एंड मेमोरी मैनेज डिवाइस ड्राइवर्स मैनेज प्रोसेस मैनेज एप्लीकेशन मैनेज नेटवर्किंग एंड मैनेज सिक्योरिटी ओके सो एज यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम दैट दैट आवर होल एंड्रॉइड इज बेस्ड अपॉन द कर्नल ऑफ लिनक्स ओके इज बेस्ड अपॉन दिस लिनक्स एनवायरमेंट ओके सो वट दिस लिनक्स कर्नल डू लिनक्स कर्नल डायरेक्टली कम्युनिकेट और इंटरेक्ट विद द हार्डवेयर लेयर एंड इट प्रोवाइड्स फंडामेंटल सॉफ्टवेयर और अदर फंक्शनैलिटीज एंड एक्चुअली मैनेजेस द पावर मैनेजेस द सिस्टम मैनेजेस द ड्राइवर्स प्रोवाइड नेसेसरी फंक्शन टू द टू द ड्राइवर्स ओके सो इट वर्क ऑन द हार्डवेयर लेवल राइट सो द so the core responsibility of linux kernel is to manage the core functionalities of an android okay next we have the libraries so what are libraries libraries consist of c and c++ code which uh, kind of helps the linux kernel to execute its function okay so let's see what we have uh, what we have over here libraries are the transaction layer between the kernel and the application for framework by providing some of the common services available for app and other programs libraries are instructions for kernel to perform the given tasks okay so what are libraries libraries give some task to the to the linux kernel to perform some task into the hardware level okay so these consist of some instructions and all okay and it also uh, behaves as a bridge or as a communication uh, medium between the application framework and the linux kernel then we have the android runtime where actually our android application runs okay so what is android runtime so android runtime consists of dvm also known as dalvik vm or also known as dalvik virtual machine so what is it i'll coming in a moment with that interacts with the app and runs the app the libraries and dvm combines to become an art okay so what is a dvm so you can see from this picture if we are writing a normal java code the normal java code uh, gets compiled into java byte code by the java compiler and then the java byte code runs on jvm also known as java vm right but in case of android application there is a java code or a kotlin code and through their compiler it is uh, it gets compiled into java byte code or a kotlin byte code okay and then by the dex compiler it changes into dalvik byte code right and then the dalvik byte code runs into a dalvik vm also known as dvm okay so, so this is how our application gets compiled as well as run in the android operating system right next we have the application framework over here right the application framework so what is it application framework contains the code compiled for the dvm and running on the dvm okay so it consists of the code that is compiled for the dvm okay so so whatever code is required for the dvm to run it consists of that particular code also the code that the dvm will run is present in the application framework okay next we have the application layer where you can see home contact phone browser all those things so what are application layer the top layer where actually our apps are installed okay so th this is where our apps are installed whenever you turn on your phone you can see the pre-installed applications are already pre present over there so it is present on the application layer okay understandable so i hope that i have made this android system architecture clear to you then we will jump into inside of an apk but before jumping into inside of an apk i would teach you guys about the terminologies okay because in the uh, inside of an apk portion in these files you will be facing certain terms that consist of these okay so that you don't feel like blank i'll teach these first before i jump into what is present inside of an apk right So what are the certain terminologies that you have to face right so you can see the basic terms the first is an activity so what is an activity the screen of the app the web page to an website is same as an activity to an app that means what in the android application whenever you turn on an application or whenever you click an app the page that you see or the pages that you see are known as activity or activities right for example in the internet when you visit a website you get to see a web page and on click of a button or a link you are 
you see a different web page right so what what a web page to an website is equivalent what an activity is to an application right so this is what activity means next we have services so services are long running tasks that requires no user interface and has to explicitly stopped by the user so background tasks like gps is an example of it right so services are the background tasks okay that requires no such user interface and to explicitly stop it means to stop it we have to explicitly stop it right next we have the broadcast receivers so what are broadcasts the messages that are sent to the phone are called broadcast also known as notifications so notifications or messages that are sent to the phone are called broadcasts so the component that listens for these notifications are called broadcast receiver okay so let me give an example to you for example you are charging your phone right when you charge your phone there's a notification that comes up right that your phone is getting charged and 20 percent charge available right so, so that is a notification that notification is known as broadcast and the component that um, searches or that receives these notifications are known as broadcast receiver next we have content provider and content resolver do not look into the definition let me tell you with the help of diagram which will be much, much more efficient for example there are two applications okay whatsapp and facebook for example okay now whatsapp is requesting a certain amount of data from facebook okay so the application whatsapp will ask for data okay will ask for data from facebook through the help of content resolver and facebook will provide data to whatsapp through the help of content provider okay so what is a content resolver content resolver requests for data from another application and content provider provides the data from the requested application okay understandable so from the diagram that i've shown over here you can easily understand and by the way you should know that in our android operating system whenever applications run they do not communicate with each other every application runs in its separate sandbox in its separate virtual machines okay so no application has the permission to communicate with another application if they need to do they will require this content provider and resolver okay and each and every application has their process id has their user id okay so each and every application are known or are recognized by their user id by the uh, by the operating system or the android operating system okay next we have intent so what are intent to come intent are required to communicate between activities okay so let me make you understand you go to a website okay you click on the link and on click of the link you are shifted to another website okay you you are shifted to another web page i would say okay you see a change on the web page okay for example there's a home button there's a about section contact us you click on about the web page change into another web page okay similarly in the android application there's a button for example so whenever you click whenever you turn on an application uh activity shows up right and there's a button for example that click me if you click that button the activity changes and another activity loads so that is happening because of the intents okay so because the intents are present activities gets switched okay am i clear with this next we have types of intent there are two types of intent explicit and implicit right so explicit intent means what intent that communicate between two or more activities of similar application okay for example there's a shopping website okay you are clicking on buy now when you're clicking on buy now the activity is switched into a payment activity of that same application so there is no involvement of second application or a third application everything is happening inside a inside of one particular application that is being done through the through the explicit intent okay next we have implicit intent okay for example i have sent you a mail telling that please click on this particular hyperlink in your gmail okay so you have turned on your gmail you have opened up your gmail application you are seeing my mail over there when you click on my mail okay you see a hyperlink when you click on that link a browser comes so in this uh, in implicit thing what happens is there is an involvement of a second application or a third application 
okay so so this is being done through the implicit intent so there are basically two types of intent explicit and implicit in the explicit intent the communication between the activities or the switch of activities okay happens within the same application and in the implicit it requires another application okay right next we have the intent resolution it is the process which checks which implicit content needs to call which activity okay so in the implicit intent there has to be some checks and processes which will tell that i need that particular second application to to pop up for, for example if we I, if i go back to the uh, hyperlink example over there i said you that in the gmail okay in the gmail i have sent you a hyperlink when you click on that hyperlink the browser will come up and show up okay now the intent resolution will make sure that whenever you click on that link the browser will show up and not like for example your phone book or something else so that is being checked by the intent resolution okay fine so we have completed our terminologies Next, I will go into inside of an APK. So what is an APK? In the Windows operating system, we have exe files, we have zip files, we have rar files, okay, we have dot extensions of that, right? APK is also an extension for the files that run on the Android operating system. APK stands for Android Package Kit, fine? Now, what that Android Package Kit means? APK is kind of similar to a zip file. You can also extract an APK. But what you will get, you will get compiled version of Android Manifest.xml, classes.dex, res folder, meta inf folder. Fine. Now you have to decompile it by some tools which I will show you in my upcoming videos. Okay. So what we get inside of an APK? Inside of an APK, we get Android Manifest.xml. So what is Android Manifest.xml? So let me show it to you. Right. Hold on. Over here okay so in the android manifest.xml the file android manifest.xml is a file it's an xml file okay which is also known as extensible markup language xml file which has all the permissions listed okay which will be needed by the application to run okay so the application that requires the permission so whatever permission required by the application or whatever activities that are required to show the content providers services that will run intent intent filters and resolutions each and everything will be listed in that android manifest.xml right understandable so it is the main file that will present in each and every application be it a very high application like facebook or self or very cheap application okay doesn't matter each and every application that you build will contain this android manifest.xml okay so it contains all the permissions all the permissions all the activities all the services that are required by the application to run and function properly will be listed in that xml file next we have classes.dex dex also known as dalvik executables okay so those dex format files contains the java bytecode what is the java bytecode i already told you that whenever a java source code is gets compiled by a java compiler it change into java bytecode okay so if i go to this particular picture you can see the java bytecode i taught you right so it contains java bytecode in dex format okay so this dex file can be decompiled and the application source code can be read okay so each and every application will have a one particular classes.dex file okay Next, we have a folder known as RES or REST, a folder which has device configurations, bitmaps and layouts. So what are layouts? How our application will look like. Okay, those are known as layouts. So that folder will contain all the bitmaps, layouts and device configurations. Fine. Next, we have the resources.arsc. So what this file has, it, the file contains the binaries of compiled component which might include images strings or other data used by an application so an application which requires some images or strings strings means i hope you can understand since we have a programming background strings or other data that is required by an application all the binaries of that of those compiled components will be present into this resources.arsc next we have a folder scholars meta hyphen inf meta inf folder 
so that folder contains the manifest information and other metadata about the java packages carried by the jar file okay it contains files like manifest.mf cert.sf and cert.rsa so it will be containing all the hashes all the algorithms that are needed for the application to sign in okay it will contain all the metadata of the java packages and the jar files okay now i'll be talking about the signing of an application okay so over in this particular notes i haven't included about the signing of an application but let's discuss about signing of an application and then we'll jump into this lab setup so what is signing of an application whenever you build an application and publish over somewhere right you need to build that application and after building the application after you make that dot apk and and before you publish into play store or app store but over here i'll take the app example of play store because i'm talking about android application pen testing whenever you upload into play store there will be a signing of an application so the signing means that it is ensuring that who is the author of that particular application what are the algorithms and hashes that are required for the application if i go into my browser and if i write for example signing uh hopefully signing of an app meaning oops signing of an app meaning so code signing is used on windows and mac os it's fine to authenticate software on first run ensuring that the software has not been maliciously tampered by a third party distributor or downloaded site okay so when an android app gets signed you can see android requires all that to be digital signed with the certificate before they can be installed okay so this ensure that a third party hasn't tampered with that particular application okay understandable so this is on this is what known as signing of an application we will be covering signing into a bit detail as well in in my upcoming lectures next we have the lap setup i know you guys have been totally waiting about this lap setup so enough of boring talks but remember the theories were important as well before you jump into it okay so we have tools set up and we have our lab setup so this is where your virtualization uh, experience will be required okay so what you need to do you need to first install a virtualization software so over here i'll take an example of virtual box because this is what i am using next you have to install an operating system over there i'm using kali linux because that's what most of the people use okay so you can use this or you can use any linux environment right and you can also do what you can also boot that up so i'll simply start my application right now over here you need an emulator to run your android device right so what you need to do go to simply uh, simply go to google and write download android studio when you write download android studio simply click on this and simply download the android studio and go through the steps whatever it's saying okay you can click over here to download the android studio after you go on uh, download studio go to this what's new page and go to this sdk platform tools once you go over here simply click on download sdk platform tools for windows if you are on windows operating system okay click on this and after you click on this you have to simply click on that i have read and agree download this thing and your zip file will be present over here okay then what is required is simply go to the download section go over here platform tools simply extract and once you extract go to this particular location over here you can see all these files go back simply copy this particular file okay platform tools copy this go to your c folder go to your windows folder okay and paste it over here paste that particular folder over here okay so hopefully you can see my one is present i don't know where i have kept it anyways i have hopefully it will be present over here if not anyways and after you uh, paste that particular file over there what you need to do you need to go inside of it okay and after you go inside of it you have to click on this particular bar over there and copy the whole folder okay copy the whole uh, path 
and simply go to the search go to environment variables environment variables click on this environment variables under system variables click on path click on edit after you go over here okay so simply click on new and paste it over here okay so i do not need it i'll simply click on okay right so you can see that uh, that this is how it will look like okay so i have inside the downloads platform tools and platform tools i have over here it's fine okay so this is how it will look like and how to ensure that you have done all the steps correctly so for that let me just remove this because otherwise it will clash with my this particular thing okay so for that go to your powershell or, or whatsoever you have terminal or cmd will work as well but i will recommend you to go to powershell and just write adb once you write adb enter and you will get this giant help menu if you get that that means your platform tools has been successfully installed okay and after you install each and everything your android studio will be will be present as well simply click on your android studio and open it up okay so based upon your system architecture about of your pc your android studio might take some time to load up okay so let's wait for the android studio to to launch and also to perform penetration testing into an android application i have also ha i in my github repository you can go to this repo known as hot plugin okay if you go to this repo if you go to vulnerable apps okay and, and after going to vulnerable apps you will get these three applications okay and in future i might post some different applications as well okay like uh, i have I, for example port droid is also an application vulnerable application okay so over here we will be testing upon these three applications okay so first i'll be showing you about diva beta dot apk okay so after you get this particular thing simply click on new project or you can click on an existing project as well click on no activity click on next simply even give a particular name because we are not focused upon android application development but i need to show you the setup okay and once you get that let it prepare all the thing it requires to do so and you need to click on this particular uh, sign over here you can see right so let it load and and then we'll start our thing okay by the time what you can do is go into a virtual machine go into your terminal okay and over here you need to type something simply write sudo apt cache search adb okay so simply write the, the password and if you don't get it it's fine uh hope so you should be getting it okay since it's not present over there you, you can download the same by like as i showed you how can you download your sdk you can simply click on this download sdk platform tools on linux as well but what i'm intended is to show you how can you perform the hack in your windows machine rather than your kali linux machine okay i'll be showing you in, in the kali linux machine as well okay so after each and everything is ready what you need to do is simply go in this view go to this tool window and what you need is device uh, device file explorer okay so the device file explorer will be shown you up here so what this will do whenever we load an android emulator the file system will be shown to you over here okay and over here you have our terminal through which we can control our android application so how to make an emulator or how to prepare an emulator simply click on this particular button which, which also says avd manager simply click on it and you can see we, i already have these okay so what you need to do create a virtual device okay and go to my preferred or recommended phone that is nexus 5 okay click on this nexus 5 simply click on next and what you need to do simply go to x86 go down and you will see marshmallow so or download the third one okay 
about this because my architecture is about x86 and not x86 underscore system uh, 64 okay so i want my android application to be x86 image right because you can see x86 image and recommend it is about x86 system image only right so simply click on this first marshmallow of api level 23 it says abi that is x86 okay and target is android 6.0 google api simply click on this download and download your image file right and i'll see you guys after it gets installed all right so our operating system has been installed and so what we will do now is we'll click on finish and once we click on finish we'll click on uh next i hope so hopefully you have to select it we'll click on marshmallow we'll select it we'll click on next and then we will write uh pen testing okay we'll click on pen testing we'll click on finish so our android virtual device will be made so we'll wait for some time and pen testing is made right and we'll click on this actions launch this avd and you can see my android machine has boot up all right so what we can see is that our android emulator has successfully started right and you can see that it's our whole phone that we can see it over here right so based upon this particular phone we will perform our penetration testing okay so let's see how can we do so so what we require is first we need to go to our this pc click on c go to users go to your user profile okay and go on app data go on local then you will see hopefully android sdk then you will get to see something called as emulators you can see emulator is present over here go to emulator and simply click uh, this particular tab over here and simply copy it okay and once you copy it go to your environment variables click on this environment variable under system variable go to path click on edit and paste it over here you can say i've already pasted it click on ok click on ok and click on ok so what's the benefit of it if you go over here and if you click on emulator okay you can see these things will come and if this things shows up that means your uh, variable is perfectly set now we will start with installing our tools so the first tool that we have is our apk tool okay now you can install apk tool from for windows as well if, if you go to apk tool if you go to this particular github you can install this apk tool as well now i'll not be going over here what i need to go is into the github okay in this github go to this releases and once you go to releases you can see since i'm using windows you can use this dot jar as well okay and save it and make sure that when you write this apk tool it should be coming like this the help menu should come if the help menu appears that means your apk tool has been successfully installed okay you have successfully installed your tool next tool which is jadex okay so by the way what is the importance of apk tool apk tool is used to decompile applications and make it readable okay not only decompile but also build applications what is jadex jadex helps to view the application source code how to install jadex simply go back right over here jadex gui click in this particular uh, github repo go to releases go down you can see this exe file will be present over here simply click on it your uh, jadex will be installed right next tool is mobsf so i will be installing mobsf in my Ali linux machine okay buff suite is already present over here i uh, hopefully if you are into this field you, you know what is buff suite and if not buff suite is a proxy manager tool okay you can intercept the request that is going from your android application so how to do it simply write buff suite install and you will get this sports figure thing go over here and 
download this community edition okay and simply install it right next tool that we have is android studio we already done adb we have done frida and Drozer. i'll not show you right now okay objection i'll not show you right now hex dump and dex dump i will be using in my kali machine right jar signer i will also show you in my kali machine and key tool is also show you in my kali machine so in my windows i have successfully installed the required tools let's go into my machine right now go to my terminal simply see if jar signer is already present so jar signer is not present but i'll do is sudo apt cache search jar signer hopefully it will be present if not we will install it you can see it's not present okay no problem let's see if hex dump is present so hex dump is already present is dex dump present no dex dump is not present so let's write dex dump is it present it's not present as well no problem let's go to our browser and i will write text dump install you can see how to install text dump ubuntu you can simply go over here and install each and everything sudo apt install text dump it's fine website Okay, so what we will do is simply we will install our Android SDK platform tools. So I will write Android SDK download. Simply go to Android Studio SDK. Then we'll move to this what's new. Let the browser load it. We'll go to SDK platform tools and we'll click on download sdk tools for linux we'll click on i have read and agree download android sdk and it will be downloaded click on ok we'll open up the file you can see the file is present over here now we have to source this file Or rather instead of sourcing what we can do is if we go to cd downloads ls we have got this thing platform what we'll do is unzip platform it will be unzipped platform tools is present clear rm platform tools and then rather underscore this i'll remove the zip file we have the platform tools over here cd platform tools ls we got adb and inside this we can uh, use this adb we can see dot slash adb yeah it will be done fine and now what we will do is we'll also install dex dump so for adb what i will do is i'll copy adb to my user I think it's directly bin folder we have right in my bin so it says permission denied what I'll do is I'll do sudo and then I'll give it a permission and my it will be done and now what I can do is by simply turn on my terminal and write simple adb it will be loaded fine that's awesome so our adb is done now it's time for dex dump to install so dex dump install oops sorry dex dump install kali so what we need to do is let's open this particular uh, website and then we'll look for it by that time what we can do is let it open we can go and install jadex over here as well sudo apt cache search jadex so what i'll do is i'll simply update my thing let me update it and then i'll search for all the tools maybe the repo is not 
updated let me update it and then i'll be turning web back to you all right so if i do now sudo apt cache so jadex jadex is there sudo apt install jadex it will be installed and similar way we will install dex dump x dump adb and all those things as well i've also showed you how to install adb let's see if it is present in the android repo i mean kali repo sudo search for adb so you can see let's see if adb is present yes adb is present as well so what you need to do you need to update your kali repo and it will be present over here you can also install this android sdk platform tools commons it will be done for you now i'll search for instead of adb i'll search search for dex dump so i don't feel like dex dump is present is it hopefully this is the one now i think this could be one as well so i think it would be this one google build tools so what i'll do is sudo apt install google google android build tools installer hit enter hit enter it's of 6 mv let's install it and after it gets installed hopefully our tools will be installed as well whatever we need simply click on ok if you don't know anything simply click on by default the default is the best thing to do and soon our installation will be completed what we will do next is we'll go over here and click on mob sf mob sf we'll go to this mobile security framework into this github and we'll download this particular thing as well go to code click on this link go to your terminal right i'll download it in my desktop i'll make a directory mkdir tools let's not write tools let's write uh, mobile pen testing cd cd mobile pen testing and over there i'll simply write git clone and i'll paste this thing now this will take a certain amount of time so i'll see you guys after it gets installed all right so what i will show you right now that we have previously installed that android google installer right over here we have uh, i've shown you how to install that dex dump while installing it this google android build tool installer now if i click on another terminal and if i go and write de and hit tab you can see dex dump is already installed right so if i click write dex and hit tab dex dump is installed if i hit enter rather dex dump hyphen h will do hopefully or not if h hyphen hyphen help anyways so our dex dump is installed and we are happy for it if we go for jadex you can see jadex and jadex GUI. so we will be basically be using jadex GUI. are we having key tool yes we are having key tool as well okay and we need to install apk tool as well so for that we also write search text dump and we'll write for apk tool we need to give our password over here you can see apk tool is there so i'll install this apk tool as well and once it gets installed our work will be done so basically most of the tools have been installed and hopefully jar signer is present as well we'll look for that and there is no such tools that is left and uh, and uh, about objection and frida and drozer i'll explain you guys about all those tools in my later videos not right now it's not so necessary okay so our apk tool is present yeah it's present right now we need to see if jar signer is there so jars uh jar jar detector 
fine so most of the tools has been installed so let's wait for our mob asap to get installed okay it's done i'll clear my screen i'll go to cd mobile security framework ls you can see manage.py run.ssh what we need to do is simply first there's a requirement.txt file i write pip3 install pip3 is not installed so i need to check whether python is installed yes python 3 is installed python 2 is installed as well so what i'll do is i'll write sudo apt install python3 hyphen pip click on hit enter hit enter again to select this by default y and my pip3 will be installed and once my pip3 will be installed i'll be installing the requirements that is required to install or run this mobile framework so pip3 install requirements so install minus r minus r stands for recursively requirements.txt hit enter and all my requirements will be installed so see you guys after it's getting installed all right so most of our tools has been installed so what i will do is simply click on ls and click on run.sh or, or not run basically setup.sh so i'll write dot slash setup.sh hit enter and it will basically download whatsoever it is required so it says fail to create virtual env so what i need to do is for that i need to do apt get install python 3 venv so simply i'll write sudo apt install python 3 hyphen venv hit enter and all my requirements will be installed and whatsoever error you will get while installing moabsf the solution will be present over there only so there's no need to get afraid of okay so let it install and by the time what we will do is we'll go into our windows powershell okay and if i write adb devices you will see my emulator is running and it, it will be shown over here the emulator it is running on okay and if i click on adb i mean if i type adb shell we will be inside our adb shell and if you are familiar with linux which i really want you to be you can understand that whenever we see hashtag it means we are we are into a root user and if we see a dollar sign it means a normal user okay so if i write who am i you will see we have get root so since we have root privilege we can basically see all the things that are present over here right if i write ps you can see all the processes that are running so we have got something simply restart services in package upgrade without asking simply for by default it's studying no by default is get, uh, best hit enter hit enter again and let it install whatsoever it is required to be installed okay so this is what we got we are inside our uh, android operating system okay we are controlling our android operating system to the terminal and this is happening because of adb so adb stands for android debug bridge it is a communication bridge between our android operating system and our host machine we can manipulate or rather uh, perform some commands we can do things inside our android operating system so if i go to my notes you can see there are certain abd commands adb commands right so adb stands for as i said android debug bridge to list the connected device what the command is adb devices minus l minus l will give you a better or rather detailed things if i write adb devices and then if if i hit enter you can see emulator 554 device okay but if i write minus l you can see a a grand description of it okay you can see this right next is to connect a device adb connect and then the address of our phone or the ip address that our phone is connected to okay so for that we simply need adb connect and then the ip address then it will be connected right next is to disconnect we have adb disconnect to get a shell we have adb shell to start an activity am am stands for activity manager start the name of the activity by minus a and then it will be started reset adb adb kill server adb start server so this will restart our adb server okay so all these commands we'll see once we uh, start basically hunting mobile application 
okay so our lab is set lab is almost completed what we will do now is dot slash setup sh we'll hit enter and let's see what error we get again hopefully we shouldn't get anything but let's see so this time i'll not skip the video because it's important to see that whether anything is missing or not so hopefully everything is going fine and if we go to our mind map lab setup is completed inside of an epic i have already covered i believe architecture i've done prerequisites is done lab setup completed terminology is completed tool setup is completed let's talk about the pen test methodology and also i'll install this cark as well let mobsf get installed and by the time let's discuss about android pen test methodologies so what i'll do i'll minimize it so that if any error comes i can see and i'll zoom into this pen test methodology the first thing that we can see over here is recon what does recon means recon stands for reconnaissance or gathering information whenever you install an application you see into a play store search it in the internet who's the author what is the android sdk version the minimum android version required the maximum things required you basically check all things right um who has made this what is their background is it uh, using a native android application development thing or a hybrid thing is it totally made on java or is is it using any kind of different languages like uh, dart or react native right uh, this is known as recon okay if they are using any website to load their android applications next is static analysis what is static analysis you are uh basically searching for bugs or hunting or doing penetration testing without actually running the app by reviewing the source code by seeing the source code by seeing the files by seeing the metadata by seeing all the things that can that is present inside an apk as i said apk is just like a zip file it has all the several files and folders present by seeing or by reviewing those things that is known as static analysis you are statically analyzing your application without even running it actively what is dynamic analysis you are running the application you are checking that on click of this button what request is being sent you are intercepting the traffic you are actively uh, interacting with the application to find bugs in static application you are not interacting so much with the applications it doesn't matter the application is running or not okay but in dynamic analysis to find work you need to actively interact with the android application that what dynamic analysis means next is the very boring phase i know but it is what uh, differentiates or separates a ethical hacker and a black hat hacker that is reporting you need to report your bugs as well okay so this is what the pen test methodology and do, do not worry i'll cover both static analysis and dynamic analysis in a very perfect manner but again i'll give you a thing that if you are preparing for your emap exam you can of course uh, check out this video as well okay so before jumping into this last top 10 let i just want to share a few thoughts with you first of all uh, this particular video is not for your android hacking i hope this by far if you're watching it till now you have already understood that, that this is not about uh, android hacking that how to hack your girlfriend's or ex or boyfriend's phone okay next is i am trying my level best to make or simplify the things that might look uh, difficult for you okay i am trying to explain each and every concept in a very very simple manner because what i believe is there is no such need of technical explanation or there is it is useless to explain if you do not understand right it is useless to make videos if you do not understand so my responsibility that if i have taken the responsibility to make you understand about mobile application penetration testing i'll try my best to teach you whatever in a in the most easiest way so that you can remember even if you do not practice okay but i will highly suggest you to practice because you will get you will forget it very easily because there are tons of information but i will make sure that all the basics gets uh dissolve in your blood okay enough of talks let's go for wasp top 10 vulnerability so if you are into this field or uh, i mean in cyber security you, you already know what is the 
OAS for me. So before doing, let's see if our MobSF is done. So I hopefully it's completed. I'll clear my screen and I'll go to dot slash run sh run dot sh and it will be running. Hopefully you can see listening. Okay, it's already started. I'll click on open link and into my Mozilla. You can see MobSF has loaded and if we just simply click on upload and analyze file, it will be showing us all the things. So it is basically used for both dynamic as well as static analysis. So this is a very good tool. You can use it. Okay. So this is all about the tools section. I'll simply click control C to end it and click exit. We'll close everything and we'll talk about, uh, do not want me close the tabs. Fine. Now we will discuss about OASP top 10 in a very good manner and then we'll wrap our session with this practice range thing. Okay, so the first thing that we get is M1 weak server side controls, M2 insecure data storage, M3, M4, M5, all these 10 vulnerabilities. Okay, what is OASP? OASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project. If it is open web application, why mobile application is there? OASP is the open source community where hackers all around the world um, make their top 10 vulnerability listing about a particular domain. If it's a web application, the top 10 vulnerabilities that you can search for, you can hunt for is present in OASP uh, list. Okay, so OASP top 10 consists of all the uh, domains of all the vulnerabilities that could be present, all the top 10 vulnerabilities, right? Uh, so we will be looking about the mobile OAS mobile top 10. So I'll simply go ahead into my notes and I have made a very good thing about it. And let's see some vulnerabilities. To not worry, I'll share these notes with you. Okay. Here is OAS top 10. So first is weak server side controls. Compromising application servers that forms the backbone of this application must be secured on their own. So vulnerabilities like injection, IDOR, insecure communication may lead to complete compromise of it and attackers who have gained control over the compromised server can basically uh, compromise server attackers who have gained control over the compromised server can push malicious content to all the application users and compromise user devices as well. Right. So what does weak server side control means? For example, you are having an Android application and that is communicating with the server. Okay, so, so the server is the backbone of that particular Android application. And now due to some injection attack or IDR attack, you are able to uh, hijack or uh, give some malicious input or perform some malicious activity into the server. And because the server is compromised, your application is compromised as well. So this is known as weak server side controls, right? Next, we have the insecure data storage. That is storing sensitive information into log files, XML files, databases in an unsecure manner. What does it mean? For example, your Android application is asking you for your uh, credentials, right? For your important credentials, for your um, PII, also known as personal identification information. Okay, if it is asking, if an Android application is asking for your sensitive information and after you give that information, if it is storing into an Android phone, if the information is stored by the application in your phone in an insecure manner that anyone can actually uh, access it through the log files, through the XML files, or it is being hard coded string, that is known as insecure data storage, which means the data is stored in an insecure manner. Next is insufficient transport layer protection. Since most of the data are prone to tampering, so SSL or TLS, okay, SSL means secure socket layer, okay, controls which enforces confidentiality and integrity of data must be verified for correct implementation. That means when an application is using SSL or TLS control and since SSL or TLS ensures the confidentiality and integrity of data, if anyhow the attacker messes up or compromises the controls, compromises the transportation or rather the traffic of it, it could be uh, disastrous, the application could malfunction, your data could be leaked and this is what known as insufficient transport layer protection. right? 
next is unintended data leakage certain functionalities which are unintentionally placed for better performance and user experience might leak data or the data might be accessible to all or via via or via malware what does it mean for example in an android application if the developer has set up some functionality to look at the ui much more fascinating to the user to make the user experience much more good if that uh, experience might lead to a leak of data for example uh, let me give a brief example if there's a button okay and the user wants that doesn't matter it's an online app or an offline app doesn't matter you are connected to the internet or not if you click on that button your picture will be shown your private pictures your sensitive data will be shown to you fine now what will happen if the data is not stored in a perfect manner okay and only you have the authorization okay only you are only authorized to see your private data or you see your sensitive data and that's why the developer has stored into your phone in an insecure manner okay so what an attacker can do then attacker can take the advantage of that particular thing and can uh, and can normally access your data okay so this is what known as unintended data leakage where actually the data is leaking not because it is not not because of an intentional act but because of an unintentional activity okay due to an unintentional activity the data is leaking due to to make an application much more fascinating some settings is getting changed some function is getting changed and due to the uh, uh, uh due to the what should i say the modification the data is getting leaked that is known as unintended data leakage next you have the five fifth vulnerability that is poor authorization and authentication since mobile devices are personal devices so developers tend to keep sensitive data in the phone itself via some safety mechanisms and only authorized users could access it if that mechanism is poorly built then all the authorized then all the authorized will data will be available to the non-authorized adversary what it means it means that the data the sensitive data that is meant for you and stored in your phone only meant for you that means what the developer is thinking that only you will be having the access but if an attacker anyhow tend to get your data and if there is a check verification method that only the authorized user have the access to see their private data if that mechanism is anyhow tampered anyhow uh, gets uh, poorly built or is malicious is uh, you know anyhow breaks or if the attacker is able to break that check uh, check facility then this will be lead to poor authorization and authentication next is broken cryptography algorithms that are meant to keep the data protected if they are not implemented properly or if the public or private key are not managed carefully then anyone could access the keys and could access the data what does it mean if your data is stored in your phone in an encrypted manner by with the help of some certain algorithms like SHA-256, SHA-512, some hashing algorithms like MD5 and all those things. Okay, if the algorithms are not protected in a perfect manner, if their public key and private key are not uh, kept in a kept safely, anyone who get access to that key or any attacker who get access to those keys or if that uh, algorithm is not perfectly managed they could bypass the cryptography algorithm they could simply uh, decrypt the data and could access the files and could access the data this is known as broken cryptography okay next is client side injections what is client side client means us okay if we are giving some user input values and that values is not being verified by the applications that is known as client side injection for example injecting queries of sql or commands of bash or any other programming based commands to alter fetch reach uh, read delete or access data and compromise it is known as client side injections okay basically there is a form for example there is a form and it it is asking me to enter my username or password and if i anyhow bypass it for example 
it is being verified by a database okay by a sql database and if i give a sql command over there and if that command get executed in the database it can lead to a disaster i can basically bypass by giving my sql command so if the application is not verifying is not validating that what type of input i am giving this is known as client side injection and over there i can like um, give anything i can write a python code i can write a i can write a bash code okay i can write any sql queries okay based upon what are the uh, technology that is used in building the application i can write that code over there to basically bypass it and if my application is not verifying what my input is then i can simply bypass or anyhow alter fetch or read or delete the data okay i can literally compromise that particular application right next is security decision via untrusted input the implementation of certain functionalities such as hidden variables to check the authorization status can be bypassed by tampering them during transit via web service calls or interprocess communication calls this may lead to privilege escalation or unintended behavior of an application that means what security decisions via untrusted input this means if i if i do not have the privilege to to uh, manage the security decisions that is being taken by the application and if anyhow i uh, give some code i tamper with the application and if the application gets modified because of my tampering this might lead for me for the attacker to gain high level access which is also known as privilege escalation and after i get high level access i can manage the security policy for example user 1 is there and user 2 is there user 1 has the high level privilege uh, high level privilege and user 2 is not having that high level privilege okay so if the user 2 anyhow um, modifies or tampers with the application or okay anyhow intercept with it does some modifications does some uh, hacking activities right and if anyhow the application if it is vulnerable to that particular bug if that application gives user 2 the high level privilege similar to user 1 user 2 can simply remove user 1 from its data can get user 1's data can perform some security decision can make user 1 go to lower privilege and make user 2 into a higher privilege all these things can be done so this is one known as checking security decisions via untrusted input next is improper session handling obtaining session tokens that are active for longer time may lead to account takeover if stolen what does it mean for example you are signing into your facebook application or whatsapp or rather instagram and there's a session token there's some cookies or csr token that is being uh, what to say that is that is uh, passing or that is being transferred from your application to a server for for checking that only you and your phone and your application has the authority to access that application and if that session cookie i mean session token is active for a very long time any person or any malicious user could 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 uh, get that particular session token via via either man in the middle attack or for example by uh, cross-site scripting or for example by a phishing attack anyhow if that session token is uh, if the attacker gets access to the session token, their account can be takeover, right? It can lead to an account takeover. The, uh, the user, the, the victim's account could be hijacked, okay? Because the session token is active and the server is thinking that, yes, the attacker, since the attacker is using the victim's session token, that means the attacker's device is a legitimate device, okay? So let's give that um, access to the attacker as well next is lack of binary protection since mobile application can be reverse engineered so if an attacker inserts malicious code and shifts to the user then the phone can be compromised so when building an application if the signing and checksum is not done correctly then the above havoc or above disaster could occur what does it mean it means since we know that mobile application are dot apks we can simply reverse engineer or decompile a dot apk and we can fetch the normal files normal uh, source code right and if the if the checksum if the signing if the various uh what to say the certificate authorization is not done correctly it is known as lack of binary protection right 
so this is all about the wasp top 10 vulnerability so i hope i have made this wasp top 10 very much clear to you we have this vulnerable app to practice i have listed all the applications the seven applications i think imas and this dvi and i code are for your ios application so since i do not have any ios device i do not have a macbook or iphone if i if in future i get those things if i purchase a macbook and all then i'll surely make video on ios pen testing as well but since i only have an android and a windows laptop so i'll be making videos on android pen testing right so this is the end of my pdf so let's see how can we perform all these things in a practical manner So we have come to an end of our OWASP top 10. What left is this practice range. Right. So here we have our Android device. And I will simply show you all these things using Windows Power version only. So I will not use Kali Linux as of right now. Whenever we need, we will see it. So here is our Windows Power Shell. Let's close each and everything. So that I can show you how does it looks like. Right. Simply restart each and everything. I'll close my PDF as well. Right. Let's start Android Studio. Let's start Android Studio. Let's start my PowerShell and let's start my Android emulator as well. And see you guys after it gets started. All right. So my Android emulator is running over here. Right. If we go in this particular settings. If we go to settings over here, we can always turn on this. That is emulator always on top. And when we turn on, our emulator will always be on top of our screen. Okay, so it will not go. So for now, I'll simply close it. And let me adjust the camera. I hope it is visible. Well, now what I'll do is I'll simply write ADB devices. And you can see it's over here. Now I'll write ADB shell you can say i'm as root for example you don't want to log in as root you want to talk as a normal user what you will do is simply exit you will write adb unroot okay so it will say restarting adb as unroot adb shell and you can see okay delete it anyway. right so since we are inside our android uh, shell what we need to do right now is we will install our vulnerable application right so for that i'll simply exit out of my adb i'll go to my folder where i have my vulnerable application you can see i have my diva beta dot apk uh, downloaded in my windows folder and how will i push that application i'll simply write adb install diva beta.apk if i hit enter you can see performing push install it says success and if i go over here you can see diva is installed so i'll bring the application in the home and i'll turn on the application i'll switch the application so the front screen that you can see is known as the activity okay and there are several buttons and we have got 13 uh, bugs or rather 13 challenges to perform so for example this is a normal application so what we will do right let's see so for example what i'll do is i'll simply make a folder i'll do a cd rather i'll go to my d directory over here i'll make a folder mkdir and i'll make a folder for example diva pen testing cd diva pen testing and i have nothing over here that's perfectly fine now what i'll do is i'll pull the application okay so for that i'll write adb okay shell and inside the shell i want to pass some commands for that i'll write pm list packages okay so all my packages are shown 
to me what i am doing is i am writing adb shell and if and then whatever i write that particular command will be executed in the android operating system linux kernel okay or in the terminal of an android you can see package is jacker asim.dev i'll simply copy it now what i'll do is in this i'll say pm path jacker asim.dev or rather what i'll do is adb pull jacker dot asim dot diva if i hit enter it says remote doesn't exist okay it's fine so what i need to do is simply uh, i need to adb shell where's my shell yeah i need to do pm path and that and then uh jacker dot asim asim dot diva why it said and why it gave us a problem because uh, this is a package name and and what we need to pull is a dot apk file so if i do like this i will get the whole apk location where our apk is located data app and all this so if i copy it i'll write adb pull let me clear the screen for you and hopefully you can see i guess right Okay, zoom adb pull and then if i paste this hit enter you can see one file pulled if i like ls this is my thing base.apk right fine now what i'll do is inside this base.apk what is present so over into my search i'll write jadex i already told you how to install it hit enter and my jadex uh, will be opened up over here it asking me where is my file is i'll simply click on volna and we'll go to my directory d over here i have developed pen testing i have base.apk that i pulled from the uh, android emulator i click on open file and in the left hand side what i'll get is all the files and folders that are present in the resources we are getting android manifest.xml file as i've already told you so in the what in the android manifest.xml file what we will get to see that the xml version the manifest the user permission that it needs permission for external storage to read and write it needs internet what are the activities present the intent filters the intent resolutions the content providers are present as well the user sdk the minimum sdk version the targeted sdk version all these things will get the package name is also present over here and all the things the platform uh, build version name the platform build version code each and everything is present over here this is why android manifest xml is required and then we have the classes of dex file also which we will um, use with the help of dex dump the uh, the tool that we have installed okay so in the android manifest the xml so let's see what's the first task that we have got in our emulator it says the first is insecure logging so i said what is insecure logging that logging of your sensitive information in an insecure manner okay into its logs it's not insecure logging insecure logging occurs when developers intentionally or unintentionally log sensitive information such as credentials session ids and financial details so what is our objective our objective is to find out what is being logged where or how and the vulnerable code right so what i'll do is first i'll find the activity that is responsible for it activity means the page which what is the code of this particular page of, of this particular screen so i'll go to android support no jacker.asim you can see hopefully it's uh let me see what it could be since it's insecure logging hopefully it is this log activity yeah it's log activity right then if we see with this particular java file it says that once we will give this it will say uh, it will try to get the text from that particular text box and it will say debug log error while processing transaction with credit card it will say an error occurred please try again okay 
so this is what it is it will say so if we write something for example one two three four five oops if we write one two is there any problem let me turn on my number pad yeah one two three four five we simply click on checkout it says an error occurred please try again later so this is what happened now what if our credit card information is stored in our logs so for that what we will do is we'll write adb shell ps if we do this you can see jacker.assume.diva is running with a process id of 4506 what i told you before that each and every application runs in their separate machine you can see each and everybody has their own privilege account or user root root u0 a22 user 22 user 4 user 45 hopefully like that okay so this is what it is you can see user pid ppid v size rss w chain pc name and all those things so our application our uh, name of our application the package name of our application is jacker.assimbrativo and it has a process id of 4506 so now what i'll do is i'll simply clear and i'll say adb logcat what is logcat logcat is the place where the logs are stored of an android application and i'll do grep over here so since it is not my since it is a uh, windows powershell i cannot use a um, grep command so what i'll do is i'll go to adb shell once i go to adb shell then I, then since it's a linux machine what i'll do is i'll simply say logcat and i'll grep it so before that i'll write ps we know it's 4506 okay i'll turn on my media so that you do not get the sound uh jacker of 4506 so what will happen is if i write log cat and if i grep for 4506 and before that let me write grep if i hit enter and if you see this very very carefully hopefully you might get certain uh information if you scroll up we will see if we get something so till now we haven't got anything let me make another request let's go check out and you can see when we do it it says diva log error while processing transaction with credit card one two three four five so you can see our credit card information our credit card number which is very very sensitive it's present in the logs in a very clear text format so this is what known as insecure logging that means my sensitive information is not is not getting logged in a secure manner so anybody having a technical background or having knowledge about this android operating system could very easily guess or rather get my and uh, get my credit card information you can see so this is what known as insecure logging so one thing we have uh, found the vulnerability next we have got hard coding issues part one so developers sometimes will hard code sensitive information for ease find out what is hard coded and where okay so what we will do we will find out the activity that is required for it so it says hard code activity okay so you can see in this particular file or, or sorry in this particular source code that we have got a method over here that is public void access edit text h key that is hard code key i can guess edit text is the field where i have to put that text and it says find view by id so it might be having some id similar to what we have in web development we have classes and id to refer that particular uh, particular field we have r dot id dot h key it says if the text plays okay if that text plays get the text convert the text into the string that means whatever we will put over here okay get the text convert the text into a string uh, data type or into a string format and check okay and compare if that equals to vendor secret key okay so what we can guess that vendor secret key is the key that it is looking for if it is true make access granted see you on the other side else say access denied see you in hell so for example if i write normal sabesashi which is a wrong uh, access key okay if i click yes and if i click on access it says access denied see you in hell 
whereas if i write vendor secret key as per the source code or as per the token is hard coded but i'll write i'll write vendor secret key secret key if i click on access it says access granted see you on the other side this is not a hard coded issue okay this means what your password if your username and password is hard coded in this particular manner this is a vulnerable thing or if if any particular api key if any particular credential credential some sensitive information is hard coded in this particular manner this means that your application is vulnerable now if we get back and uh, we will shift to another vulnerability insecure data storage what we have got over here is find out where and how credentials are being stored on the vulnerable code hint is insecure data storage is result of storing confidential information insecurely on the system with that is for encryption text access control issues and all those things fine so what is insecure data storage for that what i'll do is i'll simply write my username as sabyasashi and the password as sabya underscore pass pass if i save it it says third party credentials saved successfully and let's find out where it is being stored so if i write like for example insecure data storage one because this is what i can guess insecure data storage part one so i believe that this is the activity that we are looking for insecure data storage and if we see this particular method very very carefully save credentials it says shared preferences so it is storing our data into a shared preferences into shared preferences basically so what is shared preference shared preference is the default place where the where our folders is stored and anybody could actually get it so what is actually happening you can see edit text of user variable so get that text okay we are getting the text and uh, basically we are putting the string user and then the user dot get text to string and password get text dot string and it says third party credentials saved successfully so it is present inside the shared preferences okay so we will now see where actually shared preferences is stored so if i stop this thing if i stop this lock cat now what i'll do is i'll simply if i do ls you can see you can get lots of things i'll go to this data folder so i'll say cd data i'll clear this thing inside i am data folder again if i do ls again i have data so i'll go to cd data again right if i do ls i'll get the package name of all the application that is installed i want to go inside jacquard.async so what is it i'll do file i'll do jacquard.assim if i hit enter it says this is not a file if i do ls minus la if i go to jacquard.assim it says it's a directory since the first letter is d i'll clear it i'll go cd jacquard.assim.devile hit enter i'll click ls i've got the certain files and folders hopefully let's do ls minus la we have got certain directories one symlink and and one d that is directory called a shared preferences i'll go inside shared preferences i'll clear it ls i have got jacquard.assim.diva preferences.xml okay and now what i'll do since it's a file and now whether to check it's a file or not the first thing is that i'll use this file command and then i'll write jacquard.assim.diva.preferences.xml whatever we have i'll hit enter uh hopefully hold on i'll write file is file command there anyways what i'll do is since the file is ending with .xml i'll simply cat it out cat this uh, particular file jacquard if i hit enter you can see the whole xml is present and our user name is sabasachi and the password is sapia underscore pass so this is what we have entered into our application and you can see it is stored in an insecure manner so anybody who has the root privilege or anybody who has rooted their phone can easily get and access the credentials next we will look upon another vulnerability which is insecure data storage part 2 again the same thing so this time i'll write for example youtube underscore youtube underscore pass youtube underscore pass and username is youtube i'll click on save 
insecure data storage part 2 i'll simply go to jdx and i'll open that particular activity which is responsible for that particular thing now in this particular safe credential method what we can find it is using some kind of database right you can see on create it is using on create thing and before that it is using a library is called as sqlite so it's kind of using a sqlite database which you can understand from in this code it's using open or create ids2 that means create table if not exist my user so my user is the name of the table that is being created and inside a database called as ids2 right so what we will do is we'll simply go into our powershell over here and hopefully over there we will be able to get our files if i click on clear cd dot dot ls we have got something called as databases so we will go to data oops sorry databases i'll clear it ls you can see there are certain databases that are present i want to fetch this ids2 okay so cd ids2 hit oops sorry ls minus la ids2 is not directory it's a file so i will pull that particular file right so for that i'll simply click on exit and what i need to do i need to do adb pull i want to pull the file call as ids2 it is present inside my data slash data slash jucker dot asim dot diva slash databases slash ids2 if i hit enter one file pulled i'll go to my google chrome and i'll simply write sqlite 3 viewer oops sorry sqlite 3 viewer i'll go to this sqlite viewer in loop.github.io whatever thing it is i'll simply drop this file simply click anywhere and go to the directory where it is actually present if i go to diva print testing ids2 click on open you get android metadata over there simply click on it you get my user which is the table click on my user this is the query and what we have got is username youtube and password is youtube pass which you have entered so you can see anybody could actually access our file uh, access our credential which means that the data that we are uh, giving inside it is not actually stored in a perfect manner next we will go and see insecure data storage part 3 same thing we have to do this time i'll write username as facebook and password like facebook underscore pass if i click on save it's fine i'll minimize it i'll go to my jadex and i'll go to that particular activity responsible for that thing for that um insecure data storage part 3 challenge over here what we can see is it is actually creating a particular temporary file over here right temporary file called as u info and it is saying third party and the way it is storing is that user colon password right it is storing in this in the format of username colon the password right so what i'll do is i'll simply go to adb shell i'll go to cd slash data slash data slash jacker dot asim dot diva hit enter i'll clear the screen over here you can see u info and something and then tmp the temporary file what we have got to see over here is it says u info and temp file right this is how the file is being created okay now what we will do is we will simply write cat and then u info this thing and then hit enter you can see facebook underscore is to facebook underscore pass is our uh, credential right if i decrease the font size hopefully you can see it in a perfect manner okay cat if i hit enter facebook colon facebook i missed that b anyways underscore pass so this is what our credential is what we have uh, stored over here so this is another particular vulnerability next we have insecure data storage part 4 so the thing is same now this time i write as whatsapp 
and whatsapp underscore pass i'll click on save it says file error occurred okay so what i'll do is in that particular case simply long press this diva okay so it's not coming over here so click on back go over here long press on diva go to app info bring this over app info and once you go to app info go to permissions and give the permission of its storage because it's st storing into our phone okay and then switch back to your diva and simply click on save it says third party credentials saved successfully in the insecure data storage part 4 and if we go to our jadex insecure data storage part 4 activity we can see it is using uh, some kind of c dot uh, slash dot u info text okay and what it is doing is it is creating a file if i see sdir get absolute path okay and it is also creating a file known as sdir into get external storage directory so basically it is uh, storing the the, the uh, credentials the sensitive information into an external storage so in the android the external storage means is the sd card folder we have the sd card folder as well so what you need to do is simply go back click ls to cd dot dot cd dot dot we have got into our absolute parent folder i simply clear it if we do ls we can find this particular folder called as mnt also known as mount if we go to cd mnt if we clear the screen hit on ls we get this sd card thing we'll simply go to cd sd card we'll click clear ls you can see nothing is present over here so you might be thinking it's safe but it is not if we do ls minus la oops sorry ls so sorry let's clear it ls minus l l a if we hit enter you can see there's a hidden file called as dot u info dot txt so in linux before the file name if you add a period or if you add a full stop it means it will change into a hidden file and it will be not be visible through normal uh, normal listing of file right so what i'll do is cat dot u info dot txt hit enter and it says whatsapp is to whatsapp underscore pass and and if the developer thought of making a hidden file so the plan of the developer actually failed and still we are able to fetch the data that is present inside this application right next we have input validation issues part one okay so it says um, uh, the hint is improper or no input validation issue arise when the output is not filtered or validated before using it when developing components that take input from outside always validated for ease of testing there are three users already present in the database for example one of them is admin you can try searching for admin to, to test the output okay try to access all user data without knowing any username there are three users by default and your task is to output all the three data with a single malicious search so for example let me try admin over here as it said to test so it will make a toast that admin password and credit card number which is perfectly fine but i will not use the username whereas i'll give something very different a malicious string because since the application is not validating my input which is also known as client side injection right so i'll give something malicious by which i will fetch all the username and password and the credit card number so for that i'll go to jadex and i'll find for that activity responsible for it so for that i'll go to android manifest.xml insecure data storage we have completed you can see log activity was our first challenge and hardcore activity and insecure data storage for we have completed we have the next one that is you can see d7 or we can think of it as a challenge 7 that is sql injection activity is responsible so we'll go to sql injection activity and from here what we can find is the hard coded string admin password this and that but our task is not to find a hard coded string which is actually a very bad idea to implement just like this but our idea is not to fetch uh, output from a hard coded string but to give some malicious input so what we can understand is that there is a sql query sql select star from sql i user where user equals to this so we can actually perform some malicious activity over here 
right and since it is using sqli so we can perform sql injection right so what we need to do for it, what i will do is i'll simply put a semicolon then i use r and then i use a semicolon again one semicolon and is equals to one and then i'll give dash dash so dash dash means commenting out and this uh, inside of colon one and inside of i mean not colon single quote inside single quote one equals single quote one that means the condition is true that means whatever we are giving if that is true either show that or one equals to one which is true as well so by default give me true value that means by default show me all the things and dash dash means commenting out rest of the sql query if i click on search you can see a toast has appeared which says admin diva and john these were all the uh, credentials that are that is stored in the database and you can verify it from over here as well so this is what known as client side injection it is input validation issues next we'll go into input validation issues part 2 over here it says enter the url to view it says try accessing any sensitive information apart from a web url so let's give it a web url for example http colon slash slash uh, google.com and click on view hopefully google will be loading up actually yes you can see a browser has came up with this particular thing but our motive is not to pass web url but to pass something from where we can access our sensitive information so while testing android application if you get this particular string or i mean if you get this particular input thing make sure you enter a file path to it it can um, lead to which is which we know as the local file inclusion we can access a file okay so for that what you need to do file colon slash slash and after that we have to give the directory okay so for example i want to load a file of uh, for example this mnt sd card only so let's see slash mnt slash sd card slash dot u info dot txt okay if i click on view you can see whatsapp is to whatsapp pass our credential is getting exposed into this particular application this is what known as also lfi local file inclusion in my channel i have already uh, shown you about the lfi but that was based upon the web application but the concept is same to get the files present inside it right so present inside the android application we are getting we are basically accessing it let's access some higher level thing let's access something from the data data uh, folder what i'll do is i'll simply cd, cd dash and we'll go to cd data again data again jacker sim dot diva see uh what what do we have let's see we have something called as for example shared preferences cd shared preferences ls and we have over here this jacker assume diva preferences.xml so what i'll do is i'll simply copy this and go to our application hopefully it will not crash because it might get crashed for the first time let's paste it and let's give slash shared underscore Jacker assumed that diva underscore preferences dot xml oh my god so jacker dot assume dot diva underscore preferences dot xml and if i give like this if i click on view you can see we are able to view the xml file as well so this is what you can test for if you are practicing for uh wait hold on what did just happen all right so i have fixed my orientation of my phone it was causing the problem anyways so while testing for android application you can also check for uh files whether you can actually access uh files or not right so we have completed eight challenges and now we are left with 9 10 11 12 and 13 all these five ones let's go for access control issues okay 
it is saying you are able to access the api credentials when you click the button now try to access the api credentials outside the application if i click on view api credentials i can see this credential but i am not allowed to see this from inside the application this is happening because of explicit intent but it is showing without using this thing you have to get it just by a command or something do not use or do not fetch that particular activity from there so com what is access control issue means components from an application can be accessed from other applications or users if they are not properly protected so components such as activities services or content providers are prone to this right so what i'll do is i'll go to access control issue thing uh, let's find access control one activity you can see the set action this is a new intent we have get over here view creds so what i'll do is i'll simply copy this thing and i'll simply copy it right now what i'll do i'll simply close my application and we'll try click on exit clear well i think am is not present over here it should not be present okay so my bad i have to go to adb shell again and now i'll oh oops i'll put clear i'll write am that is activity manager start minus a the activity i'll paste the activity and what i'll do is i'll simply go over here emulator always on top i'll press it and then if i hit enter it says you can see the vendor repair credentials pops up this is known as um, your access control issue that means an authorized person has the authority to see their api credentials but if i directly paste the or if i directly start the activity then it is getting started so this is vulnerable right what actually happened is if i click on this diva and if i go to access control issues part one then click on view api credential then it should come whereas what i am doing is i am closing the application and i am simply giving this command i am i am telling my uh, activity manager to start an activity for me to start this activity so what the developer should that should have done that it should have checked that whether the correct user is getting or not and if that particular activity should not be should not be directly accessible from uh, from here and there so if i click here enter my activity is directly getting popped up which should not, which shouldn't be done right so this is how we can uh, this sort of proves that this thing is vulnerable okay next we have access control issues part two it's saying you're able to access the third party app twitter api credentials after you have received with with twitter the app requests you to register online the vendor gives you a pain and all those things okay so the thing is if i click on view api credentials i should get this particular file okay so how will i how will i do this let's check let's go to access control activity 2 and for now i'll just minimize it control 1 access control 2 it says view creds over here right so what i'll do is let's copy this let's copy this as of now and let's see whether it is applicable or not okay so what i'll do is i'll simply remove it and paste it right if i close this let's see whether it is happening or not if i do this it says enter pin reset from twitter so this is not what we wanted so we will go back to our JADX again and you can see it is actually verifying the check pin thing right it is verifying the check pin so what we can understand from here and if we read the thing if we go to our android manifest.xml it is if i uh, remove this thing it says access control one and there's another access activity over here access control 2 over here access control 2 and it is using another thing which is api creds 2 dot activity and it is having an intent filter of view creds right so what we can do is we can actually say activity manager to start an activity okay what activity would that be it would be this particular activity jakar asim api 
creds to activity okay start this particular activity and show me this particular thing hold on uh, show me this particular section okay give me this show me this particular activity to me okay do not restrict it for me if i give her like this and then if i give an extra variable dash e stands for extra variable and it needs a particular data type if it's an integer i'll write i if it's a string i'll write s but we need a boolean so for boolean we need z i believe it's hyphen hyphen ez and then we have to give something known as the extra variable so over here you can see actually if we go to this activity it is actually using something known as check pen right and it is using that r dot string so it might be present inside the string xml string dot xml file okay so what i'll do is i'll go to strings dot xml file and let me just find where it is uh, if i go to values i'll get the strings dot xml and if i go and look over here you can see this check pin variable it actually has a uh, value of check pin okay so if i give ch k underscore pin that would be false so if I, if I give ch e c c k then only it will be verifying me so i need to give ch e c k underscore pin and the value would be false right and then if i start my emulator if i close all these things let's see if it works or not or it might give an error it says bad component name and by the way, I said you about this ez is an extra key and the boolean value. Okay. So what wrong did we do? Let's see. So we have given a command. Let's let me this thing. Pull this is visible. Not yet. This is visible. Not yet. Okay. What I'll do is am start minus a or rather what I, I would have done is since i'm starting an activity i have to give dot i mean i have to give a backslash before this dot thing okay and let's see if it is working you can see it has started but again it gave an error to us it says it is not present what i'll do i'll change the switch okay so i have given over here hyphen n i will give over here hyphen a and i will give over here hyphen n if i start this it says bad component name so what i will do it again is i'll give slash over here starting an intent and hence we have successfully done it so let me make you understand what the hell did we do now look over here very very carefully i need your full attention over here i have told the activity manager right let me assume it for you i have told the activity manager to start an activity for me what is this uh, api creds 2 dot activity if i go to this uh jacker thing if, if i go to this jadex thing if i go to android manifest dot xml you can see access control to activity now inside this it is having this api creds 2 dot api creds 2 activity okay this is where actually our uh, login thing is getting placed for example if i say if i go over here this is where it is being asking for us for that pin okay if i go to access control issue not not this sorry part two i believe yeah if i register now click on this this is what is actually our api creates two activity okay and now it is having a filter that if i get this true then only i am uh, permitted to see this view creates two okay and what is this view creates two view creates two is this one if i do not click on register now if i click on only registered this is what is view creates two activity okay so what i am telling the activity manager is that start an activity for me and do not check whether i am verified or not so for that minus n jacker assume the diva and 
whenever we start an activity we need to specify that this is my activity name and before that we have the dot we have that period and before the period we need to give a backslash i mean a forward slash sorry okay and then we will mention that after doing this start an activity for me which in the name of this view creates two and what you have to make sure since there is a verification of that pin i'm giving an extra variable and the variable name is check pin which we have found from the string.xml and make that value as false and when we enter it our intents get started and we get to see this api credentials so this is what it is actually vulnerable okay we should be in like besides there's a checksum or besides there's a verification still we are able to fetch the credential in i mean to fetch the sensitive credentials right so this is one vulnerability that we have spoken about that that we saw and next is access control issues part three it says this is a private node application you can create a pin once and access your nodes after entering the correct pin now try to access the private nodes from also the app without knowing the pin okay enter four digit pin i'll give for example one two three four i didn't matter and create a change pin it says fine go to private nodes one two three four access private nodes and we can access the private nodes but our objective is not to give that pin but to fetch that private nodes how can we do that simply uh, i'll go to jadex i'll go to android manifest.xml this is where the activities are loaded you can see over here there's a provider nodes provider okay fine now what i will do is you can see that we have access control 3 and with the sorry yes access control 3 it is using the access control 3 nodes activity and just giving that input validation no not info, not input validation access control 3 nodes activity so what we will do is we will go to access control 3 if we go over here you can see it is getting all this thing it is keeping it inside the shared preferences not access control 3 hopefully it's access uh, yes, it is. It is actually keeping in shared preferences. It is making a pin and says private nodes are protected. In the note activity, what it is showing is that how our activities are actually stored. And in this notes provider, you can see this is the thing. This is the note provider and this is the content URI. This is the content provider. It all the data are you know hard coded over here you can see all the data is hard coded over there so from here also we can fetch the data but our aim is not to fetch from here but to start an activity or but, but uh, not to start an activity to actually get the data for, from the terminal okay so what we will do is we will take the help of a content uri okay so i'll simply copy this thing I'll copy this i'll go to my uh over here i'll write content and i hopefully it's content query right let me just check it if it's content query and yes it's content query we have content read we have content query and all those things but i'll write it i'll write content query dash dash uri and then our this thing that we have uh, copied so we will basically get the content provided directly if we hit enter you can see all our things are present over here all our data is visible to us right alternate days running spent too much of home on home theater nodes either go or stamp or, or anything else right so this is where we can understand that that since it is actually giving us the data so it is the work of a content provider to provide the data and hence the content provider is vulnerable in this particular case right so hopefully it is understandable now what i'll do is let's jump into another vulnerability we have two more left hard coding issues part two find out the hard coded and where it is being stored so hard coding issues i'll go to jadex we have over here uh, hard coded to activity it says all right 
but it says access branches on the other side it is taking the text and dgni dot access okay so let's go to diva dgni hopefully you can see it is creating an instance over here that private diva diva jni we'll go to this diva jni and private uh, public class diva jni you can see it is using a so name that is a so file it is using a system load library okay and in this diva jni so where can we find this uh, so file okay so we will find into this x86 folder inside this lib into this resources lib x86 we will get this lib diva diva dot so okay and if we open this then only we will get to see it now how to open it simply you need to exit out of it exit you are do ls base dot apk use apk tool click on d to decompile and base dot apk hit enter it will take some time to decompile our application so i told you how to decompile the application using the apk tool d for decompile and base dot apk if i give ls you can see base is there ls if I add ls, you can see it's a directory as well. cd base ls, we have got lib cd lib ls, we have got x86, which is a directory as well. cd x86, oops, sorry, x86 ls lib diva jni.so cat lib diva jni.so. We have got some random text, okay. But what we need to do is I'll simply write clear ls I'll do strings lib diva jna dot so hit enter we have got all the let's uh, strings over there that means whatever is in a string format we have got now one thing you can do you can brute force all these things into this particular application you can brute force and see what is what do we get and what not okay but also we can perform some recon now we will see diva apk github we can get this thing and then we can perform our search as well for example if we go to this app src let's see if we get something android application test java we don't get anything we click on main you can see jni and diva jni.c let's see if we get something here you see hashtag define there's a macro defined over it if you're familiar with c it is known as define uh, it's known as macro hashtag define vendor key as the value of o l s d f g a d uh, semicolon l s l h and similarly over here also we have got this particular thing so what i'll do is we can simply copy it right but since I cannot copy it over here, I'll do is hopefully I can copy it. Let's see. O L this thing. Control C. Long press. Paste. Yeah. And if I click on access, it says access granted. See you on the other side. So hard coding issue. Maybe it is not hard coded in that particular manner. Maybe it was well encrypted, but still our recon method has proved that we can uh, basically the uh, string the vendor key was not hard coded into the application itself but it was present online the internet in the source file right so this is why recon is important as well next we have the input validation issues part three it says the missile this is a missile launch app spread love not war dos the ram system dos means denial of service your objective here is not to find the code and then launch missiles rather to crash the app okay so how can we crash the app so this is a kind of a buffer overflow thing actually not purely buffer overflow it is kind of uh, we have to give constant thing and, and since it's input validation issue so what we can do is we can if we give one 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 two 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 three three if we click on push the red button it says access denied okay so what to do if we actually get the access we will simply give random text for example a bunch of ones a bunch of twos a bunch of threes bunch of fours 
bunch of files whatever give high amount of user input and if we click on push the red button our application crashes and this is what our objective was to actually crash the application so through here we can understand that the application was vulnerable and we have also solved our viva uh, vulnerable application in this video i have uh, taught you most of the things about the android application now what left is to show you about the static analysis yeah basically talking about static analysis whatever we have done till now was actually static analysis we haven't uh, made the app run we we haven't uh, taken we haven't intercepted the request we haven't done any modification in the request we haven't uh, changes change the network traffic what we what we have actually done is we have actually found vulnerability using the java source code right so this is what known as static analysis so till now what we whatever we have done is known as static analysis and from now on or from my next lecture what we will see is how to perform dynamic analysis okay and after the dynamic analysis i will wrap up the session and i'll give my final thoughts and final study materials and then we'll complete our session okay so see you guys on my next lecture all right so in today's lecture we'll talk about the application signing process in my earlier section also i have already spoken about the application signing process i've taught you what is application signing means and you can also go through this sort of definitions that are present in the internet so in short let me explain you what this application signing means basically the android operating system does its security in such a way that if an application is not properly signed that application will not be installed on your device okay so that means uh, that is the main purpose of application signing it's a kind of a security check or security verification and here i have a proper flowchart which describes the proper uh, signing methods okay so here is an application and an application has three types of checkup that is a v3 signature a v2 signature and a v1 signature right so what does the android operating system does the android operating system opens the apk okay it's the main purpose of the operating system is to check that whether the apk is v3 signature v3 signed or not okay if the application is v3 signed then check for the v3 rules and regulations verify it if it is yes then go for installation else reject it okay now if the application is not v3 signed then it will see if the application is v2 signed if it is v2 signed then it will check whether it that will basically verify using the v2 rules if it is yes if it is a green signal then install the apk if it is not being verified by the v2 rules okay then it will reject the application now if it is not even signed by the v2 signature okay if it is not v2 signed then it will check whether it is v1 signed if it is v1 signed then, then it will check whether it is uh, it will verify whether it is uh, matching with the v1 rules or not if it is matching with the v1 rules okay then it will install the app if not then reject the app this is the whole theoretical uh, perspective of application signing and now what i'll show you is the practical of application signing now while doing it we will be using a tool called as apk tool which i have already shown you how to install by sudo apt but i think that might cause some problems i would suggest you to remove that installation okay and how will you remove that apk tool simply write sudo apt remove apk tool and this is how your apk tool will be removed okay so i have already removed my apk tool now how to install apk tool this is a quick guide over here okay if you go to this particular url if you go this particular web page in the linux thing you can actually see how the apk tool installation is being provided to you okay and if you carefully follow it your apk tool will be properly get installed okay so so what i'll do is i'll simply go to my desktop and over here i will go to app sign directory and over here i already have an application called as diva beta okay so for you let me remove this particular folder okay and now what i'll do is you can see i have already have an apk so i will decompile an apk first of all okay so what i'll do is i will decompile an apk so for that simply write apk tool hyphen d 
and then the diva beta apk hyphen r for recursive hyphen f for forcefully okay and then hit enter so this will take a certain amount of time to decompile and since it is decompiled if i do ls you can see diva beta and if i go inside this you can see all those particular files now what i'll do i will simply go cd dot uh, cd dot dot ls over here i get this diva beta folder so for example i'm a developer and i need to sign this application to be able to um, publish it into the play store so what i'll do is i'll now do apk tool hyphen b uh, sorry apk tool space b for your um for the build thing b stands for build and then i'll give the name of the folder it is diva beta and then i'll o and let's name the apk server.apk if i hit enter it will take certain amount of time to basically uh, make the apk and and you can see it shows build apk so if i do ls you can see server.apk now with the help of jar signer if i do help and you can see that we have verified verify assigned jar file so what i need to do is i need to do jar signer hyphen verify and then sub.sarchi.apk if i hit enter you can see no manifest jar is unsigned that means my apk is not signed so it will not be installed in my mobile phone so how i have to sign it so in my notes i have already given a code or a command how to sign an application but we will use the tool known as key tool right till now we have been using apk tool okay so do not get confused between apk tool and key tool so i have told about key tool and then what we'll do is hyphen gen key so i have given all the meaning of the commands over here so hyphen gen key stands for generate key so hyphen gen key okay and then we'll give hyphen v which stands for verbose and then we'll give hyphen key store so the place where our key will be stored okay the repo where our keys will be stored and then the name of our key store okay so for example i am giving diva dot keys okay and now hyphen alias so i have to give some alias name so if i give slash a i mean dash alias and then some name so i will write sabya diva okay and then what i have to do and then i have to give my key name okay i have to give uh, my key name so i have already given that i have already given this alias name now hyphen key alg so the algorithm that we will be using to make our uh, to uh, generate our keys that will be used to sign our application so hyphen key alg we will be using oops sorry hyphen key alg so we will be using rsa in this case so rsa and then what we'll be using is hyphen key size the size of our key so if we use hyphen key size it's 2048 oops sorry 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 we'll be using 2048 and then we will give a validity validity okay so for this for example 3650 okay the number of days right so key tool hyphen gen key hyphen v hyphen key store then diva dot keys so i have given the name of our key store anything would do hyphen alias and then the alias name key alg the algorithm the key size and the validity if i hit enter it will ask me to keys enter a key store password let me give right one two three four your key store password must be must be at least six characters okay so for example let me write diva diva one two three four re-enter password diva one two three four hit enter what is the first name subvesachi organization and unit for example youtube oops what is the name of your organization google city california oh california state or province province let me write for example washington what is the two letter country code for this unit i don't know i don't know let me write ny stands for new york and doesn't matter what you give 
and is everything correct so we'll write yes enter and if we do ls our keys are stored you can see divar dot keys okay the name which we have uh, given over here divar dot keys okay now what need to be done so our key has been generated and with the help of this particular key we will basically sign our application so for signing we will use a tool called as jar signer okay so we will use jar signer and then the command is hyphen sig alg which is for signing algorithm so hyphen sig alg so in this particular case we will be using sha1 with rsa so let's give sha1 with rsa and then we'll use the digest algorithm so the digest alg hopefully yeah so that's sha1 sha1 hyphen key store so name of our key store that is diva dot keys okay and then the store pass hyphen store pass so we gave that diva one two three four right and then repackage.apk so this is the application that we need to sign so that was sabyasachi.apk hopefully it will work sabyasachi.apk and now the final version that we need so this will be repackage.apk so this is what we are actually signing and then our alias name what we have given so it was sabya diva sabya diva so if i make this clear to you jar signer the signing algorithm then the algorithm the digest algorithm then the algorithm hyphen key store the name of our key store so in our case the name of our key store was diva.keys because that's what we have given in this key tool uh, command diva.keys the store pass that we given over here in this particular line okay and then sabasaji.apk this is what we are trying to sign and then the sabya diva the alias name if we hit enter it says means it says jar is signed but it also says that that the algorithm that we use are not so much secure so anyways we can see that our applications has application has been signed sabasaji.apk and now what we can do is we can simply use jar sign or hyphen verify sabasaji.apk and it will say jar is verified okay and what i will do is hyphen verbose as it's telling so hopefully all the details we are getting out of it right whatever details we had you can see all the details we are we are actually getting so this is how we can sign an application now from a hacker's perspective what we can do is for example if i unzip my apk my newly signed apk okay using unzip and then sabyasachi.apk if i do ls you can find this meta inf okay so i'll go into this meta inf and i'll get this sabya dev dot rsa okay so now i'll do hyphen file and then sabya dev dot rsa and then if i hit enter you can see i have got all the information regarding the keys and all the data that we actually given during the signing application okay during the signing procedure okay so this is what signing actually means and this is a this is how a hacker can actually uh, get details from this meta inf folder and this is how we can fetch all the important data okay so this is all about the application signing hope you have understood so now next i will be showing you about the traffic interception and the dynamic analysis and so see you guys in another lecture of dynamic analysis all right so today we will be discussing upon on rather focusing upon the traffic analysis part 
and we will show you how can you configure your bob suite and make it listen to your traffic and all okay so for that i have created another uh, android virtual device now let me show you what is the specification of it if you go over here and if you simply click on this create virtual device what you need to do is that simply go to nexus 5 that i have already uh, told you that it is my preferred one simply go over there and simply click on next and for this i have chosen this particular uh, system image it is hue and after that simply click on next give it some name and simply click on finish and, you, and your work will be done okay so this particular device is non-rooted that means i cannot have a root privilege on it so what i'll be doing is that simply go to your buff suite under proxy tab go for options and make sure your intercept is off go for options simply uncheck this particular thing which will be your local host is to 8080 now simply click on add and bind to port 8082 and what you need to do is click on specific address and this address should be your host address that means your pc's address okay so in this case i'm using windows it is my windows address how to verify is go over here go into windows and write ip config and simply over here you will get wi-fi lan adapter and this is what my wi-fi adapter is okay i mean wi-fi ip is sorry so simply click on that and click on ok so this will be working fine and now what you need to do is go to your uh, in this particular thing now you need to do what is that simply go to your wi-fi it says connected no internet no issue simply click on the settings click in the settings click on this advanced option click in this proxy click on manual go to this proxy example and in this example give uh, it i think 10.0.48.78 right and in this uh where did it go oops uh, where is the navigation bar come on over here yeah in the proxy port simply give 8082 and click on save right go back and now what you need to do is simply go to a browser accept and continue because there's no way simply click on no thanks all these checks by google and what you need to do is simply go to this particular browser http slash slash burp hit enter and you will get this verb suite community edition simply click on the ca certificate i hope you can see it hold on let me zoom it for you okay you can click on the ca certificate simply click on it csr.dir no problem click on download your file will be downloaded right now go back go to your file manager go to files over there your certificate will be lying simply long click third uh, these three arrows simply click on this rename and instead of this dir change it to sir the cer instead of der change it to cer and once you do so hopefully it's changed yeah csr.cer simply close it go to settings and search for certificates simply write cert hopefully that would come up see install certificates click on install certificates go to install certificates simply click on this third one click on downloads it says csert.cer I don't know for some reason it's not taking I don't know why hold on if it's that only click on download yeah it's over here give it a certificate name called burp for example it says vpn and apps no problem keep it that only no issue and click on ok and your certificate will be installed okay certificate authority installed fine now what you need to do is simply go back go back go back and what you need to do is go to your google over here 
and let's search for search for example let me search for uh let's search for let's write hacker okay and now let's simply go to intercept turn intercept as on and I'll simply hit enter and you can see my intercept has been, I mean the traffic has been intercepted you can see service archie Paul hacker this is why this is what I searched for and if I hit end uh, this one go to settings emulator always on top I'll close this one simply I'll click on forward some checks will happen and based upon the internet connection my all things will be shown over here all the request will be coming click on intercept us off and you can see it's here right and this is me this is my linkedin account by the way right so this is how we can actually uh, intercept our traffic and this will be much more helpful in the dynamic analysis section so this is how we can configure our burp and this is how we can intercept it and now we will see how can we perform your dynamic analysis in our next uh, lecture all right so from now on we'll start our dynamic analysis section so previously like till now i have showed you how to perform a static analysis and now we will move ahead with our dynamic analysis using a tool called as mobsf now how to install mobsf i have already shown you how to install mobsf in kali linux but since i am using windows i am showing you how can we do the same in windows as well okay so if we go to the in my kali linux over here and if i simply go to desktop and if I go to mobile, what do I have over here? Uh, Android. We have Android. And over here I have this MobSF. If I clear it, you can see you have this run.bat. So in the uh, Windows system, what you have to do is you have, you have to first of all install pip3. And with the help of pip3, that pip3 install minus r requirement.txt you have to install all the requirements and then you need to do setup.bat simply write dot, uh, dot and then forward slash then setup.bat and after the setup gets completed then you have to do run.bat okay so i'm showing you the thing how can you do it so what i'll do is i'll go to my this pc i'll go over here and since my it's kept over here hold on it's in users hopefully yeah over here over here my uh, mobsf is installed rather downloaded i have git cloned it inside users then my user profile and then inside in this folder so i'll copy the whole path of it i'll go to my powershell what i'll do is i'll simply click on cd and i paste it hit enter and i'll move in that location you can see if i do ls i have this run.bat bat means the batch file which is for windows okay so what i need to do simply run hit hit tab so you have to take a dot then a slash a backslash not a forward slash for windows you have to uh, do backslash and for linux you can do forward slash okay so for windows you have to do dot backslash then run.bat and if you're doing it for the first time then you have to do dot backslash setup.bat okay so i am i have already installed it so i will do run.bat if i hit enter it will say running mobsf on 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 is to 8000 so we'll go in my browser and i'll write 127.0.1 which is my local host and 8000 hit enter and my mobsf will be loaded so, okay so now i'll click on upload and analyze so before that i'll make one instance of it because since we are mo moving ahead with dynamic analysis what i'll do is i'll simply click on upload and analyze and then into this devop interesting i have this base apk or what i can do is i can uh go to over here we have one apps i can give diva beta this one i can click on open it will analyze and you can see in the title bar it's telling static analysis so it will give me all the 
things all the information that the app score security score tracker definition the sizes the algorithms use the file name the app name the package name the main activity name target sdk version minimum sdk version maximum sdk version android version name android version code there are 17 activities there are no services running there are no broadcast receivers and there is one content pro provider you can check all the details over here right and if i take you up we have got each and everything you can see scan option you can click on rescan or you can start your dynamic analysis as well decompile code you can click on view android manifest xml view source code view smally download the java code download the smally code or download the apk here here you get the signer certificate okay here you can get the certificate here you can, you can get the status and description of it here you can get the application permission and whether the permission that has been given over there is safe or not which one is dangerous which is normal which is fine okay then you get the android api all these apis are there and what are their files in which those apis are mentioned you get all those things you get a manifest analysis and literally each and everything whatever you can think of so mobisef is a great tool for your static analysis hunting as well it will make your job easier you can see all these things that i have already shared with you right and if i scroll down you can see all those things are present over here you can see some niap analysis then there are certain identifiers some requirements some features and their descriptions are also given over there the apk id analysis has been done over here as well they're also detecting the server location anyways so they're detecting it's kind of from united states america california now i don't know whether it is true or not so they have searched the domain as well it's from pia2.com the status is good and they have scanned all these things and since the region is california that's why they are showing it in california so from here you can pre pretty well understand what they are actually trying to do right from the url as well and they have certain other data they have the strings one okay so you can go ahead and search things from here as well and if i scroll down there are very juicy details present over here there are some files you can see what are the files that are present you can see the PNG files are also present in this REST folder which where I already told you that whatever files that are needed for the Android to run all the files will be present. The XML files are also present, the manifest, the cert.sf, cert.isa, all these things are present over here. You can get the scan option, sign certificate, permissions, Android API, plausible activities into security analysis. You can get network, manifest, code analysis, binary analysis. App analysis, file analysis in malware, you get epic ID analysis, quark analysis. But since we haven't used quark, so we'll not look into that. Server locations, domain malware check, reconnaissance, we get URL, firebase, email, tracker, strings, hot code secrets. So, like for example, if your app is using a firebase, it will be showing us over here. Okay, in the component, the activities. What are those what are all the activities that are present is there any services present is there any broadcast receiver present is there any content provider present what are the libraries that is being done what are the files you can also generate the report but i think in my case it will give an error because i haven't installed that tool so it's of no use it's fine if you click on print report let's see what does it give us Mm, you can see the whole thing has been shown to us if we click on background graphics it's of 82 pages and you can see a whole pdf has been generated for us okay so this is a great tool for hunting your android application and of course you can convert it into a word file and then you can modify your details if you want to but i'll not suggest that right so i'll simply click on cancel and then you can click on start dynamic analysis but if you click on start dynamic analysis you will get an you will get problems it will not run why because if you go to this in this mob itself, github .io, into this uh, documentation and inside configuring dynamic analyzer you have to click on android studio emulator and they have said that 
it suppose all this so our android architecture is of x86 which is perfectly fine and android version up to 5.0 to 9.0 and up to api level 28 so let's create another android virtual device all right so what i have actually discovered that any android device okay the, basically we have made this avd so any avd having this play store icon will not work with mobsf okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply delete this particular a avd and if we go to this configuring dynamic analyzer anal analyzer it says up to api 28 android version 529 so if we go to avd over here if we go to pen testing and simply if we click on edit it's android 6.0 so it's 5 to 6 and if we talk about the api version i mean yeah if you talk about the api version then it's of where to get the api version then soft 23 which is perfectly fine as well because it says up to 28 so what i'll be doing is i'll be starting this pen testing one okay so for that i'll go to my powershell and the place where i actually started this i'll list my avds and simply copy this pen testing and over here i'll be replacing with this pixel 3 and pasting it then i'll hit enter and we'll wait for our avd to launch hopefully it came up yeah and we are having this diva one right so now we'll go for mobsf we'll go move this thing upload and analyze we'll click on upload and analyze we'll click on this base apk you can see we'll click on dynamic analyzer it says detected android version this FIDA will be used, it's fine. Location in device, all those things we have got. It says jacquard.assim.diva. This is what we are going to do. So we'll simply click on recent scan. This is what it is. And if we click on static report, it will show us over here start, start dynamic analysis. And let's wait for it to do. All right, so finally it has came over here. We have already started our dynamic analysis. So this is how your interface will look like after that, after that loading is being done. So if I go over here, it's fine. Simply you have to click on show screen and hopefully it will be showing it over here or rather over here. Okay, it's showing us over here and then you can we can perform all these things so over here you can see start activity so of course we can click on any activity to start so for example if we click on this, this log activity and if we click on start activity it might take some time you can see our insecure logging has done actually our application is running and you can see it started over here as well we go back it came back over here as well okay and this is how we can actually perform it if we click on start instrumentation i want to see what actually happens what i'll do is i'll simply go over here and i'll go on settings emulator always on top i'll do this so this, so that whatever happens i can actually see that you can see i have got the shell access as well so ls adb xe ls requires an argument let's see help what do we get over here it's not a normal shell it's something we have so i think adb is there right so adb 
devices. Okay, so if we go and write locket, or rather key generate forward help shell libraries providers activities what if we write activities it will list all the activities right so if you go for free dialogs if you go for errors is there any error if we move our phone what we can do is we can click on activity tester let's see what happens you can see it's happening automatically something i'm even not doing anything and it's actually checking for some activities it is actually randomly visiting all these activities if i go on this dynamic analyzer analyzer you can start activity it's all it it is actually basically visiting all these things all these activities we go on Frida Live Logs, it's not showing us something. All right, we can get a log, log cat stream. And you can see in this dynamic analysis, what's act, what actually is happening is that the application is actually running in order to get some bugs and all. You can see we have, we are actually started getting things. Let's see what happens. Can we do some log cat streaming? You can see I have started the streaming of log cats. Now, for example, if I go back, if I go back, go back, go back, go back, I want to go over here and click on one, two, three, four. Okay, it's actually. If I push this button and give it a huge number string. Push the red button again. Unfortunately, the bus stopped, and hopefully, it came over here as well. Hopefully, it's this one that consumer close input channel. So we can click on stop streaming. We can go to dynamic analyzer and we can go for ssl tls thing we can run tls or ssl tests let's see what happens now it will perform certain checks and all so let's give it time to and you can understand like this is how we can actually perform this uh, dynamic analysis you can go ahead with this tool you can try and test all the things that is required for you to do okay but make sure that your avd when you are setting up your android virtual device make sure it shouldn't have this play store icon because any device having this play store icon will not be you know is not eligible for dynamic analysis via mobisf it generated some report for us and we see download our print report it's this one it gave us some extra information as well right so this is how we can perform some dynamic and static analysis and then we will wrap up our mobile application penetration testing session with with a final thought of mine so see you guys in the next lecture Well, welcome into this last video of mobile application penetration testing. This would be a kind of a conclu conclusion of what I have actually taught you. So till now I have taught you about the static analysis, the dynamic analysis and most probably if I go to this mind map, I have covered about the prerequisites, the architecture, the inside of an APK, the lab setup, the terminologies. I have also said you about the tool setup. I have showed you the static and dynamic analysis as well. I have went through the OWASP top 10 and uh, I'm stating about the practice range. I have also covered the DIVA walkthrough completely. St uh, 
leaving the injured android and insecure bank version 2 that i am giving you as a homework what you can do is you can solve this too as well if you have any doubt you can post it in the comment section and i'll try my best to answer those questions as well and also in future i'm planning to make a full dedicated video on these two android applications and, and some more applications as well so this was just a video on android app penetration testing to to rather guide you how can you proceed for, uh, forward in this particular domain because what i have found that on youtube there are there are certain videos but there is a lack of android application penetration testing video or rather lack of good android application penetration testing video so i thought of contributing as well so i would rather suggest you that if you go to this uh, youtube and write android pen testing you can get wise fox security mystic on talk you can i would highly suggest you to go and watch this video from hacking simplified this particular video is helpful as well from wild west hacking pest go and see this talk so first three videos are very very recommended for you to watch then i would suggest to go and and check out this playlist by bits please on android pen testing this is a very good playlist and the last resource is this from insider phd about this particular thing that is mobile app hunting getting started with android by using jenny motion so you can go ahead and watch this video series and talking about books the first book that I'll very very suggest is that Learning Pen Testing for Android Devices by Aditya Gupta is an Indian author and he has written and done a, such a wonderful job in writing this particular book. Okay, it's written in very easy language so you will have no problem in understanding and also another book, the last book that I'll suggest to you is this Android Developer PDF. If you go ahead and click this, you will get the official android developer pdf by the google developer training team you can go ahead and learn more about the android thing adb activity manager package manager and all those things okay so these were certain uh, resources and if you are planning to give some examinations and certifications you can go ahead and earn your certification called as emap that is the elon security mobile application penetration tester so there are certain videos online which will give you a, a review of this particular examination so i would like to conclude my video ever over here and thank you so very much for watching till here if you have any sort of doubt please uh, tell me in the comment section and on the and in the future i am planning on bringing your web application pen testing video as well a fully dedicated one so thank you so very much for watching till here and see you guys on my next video in on my channel and goodbye